This little tiny module has six cores, eight gigabytes of memory, and an Ampere generation GPU in something the size of a DDR5 SODIM. And while that is 40 tops of int 8 performance, if you want to go all the way up to something like a 275 tops of AI performance in a little single board computer, you can get something like this developer kit where you can get up to 64 gigabytes of memory, 12 ARM cores, and tons of PCIe expansion. NVIDIA is one of the hottest technology companies right now, and these products might be the things to help propel them into the future. With that, let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and V these are the NVIDIA Jetson Orin developer kits. Now in front of me, I have two different kits. This kit over here is the higher end version, which is the NVIDIA Jetson AGX Orin developer kit. And this thing is, uh, is super fast. It has a 12 core ARM processor, 64 gigabytes of memory. It has onboard storage. It also has a 2048 core Ampere generation GPU, which is just a little bit smaller than what you would find on a NVIDIA RTX 3050 six gig card. And if you want to go a little bit smaller, you can also get this, which is the NVIDIA Jetson Orin Nano Developer Kit, which has eight gigabytes of memory and a lot of the same features, just in a scaled down version. In fact, this little system has more Int8 tops than many of the AI PCs that are going to be launched today, and it's been out for a little while. Now, 100%, these both cost more than a Raspberry Pi 5. I am not debating that, but they also have way more functionality. And for NVIDIA's future, well, the NVIDIA future looks a lot like these, but just scaled up. And so in this video, what I want to do is talk about that NVIDIA data center juggernaut that is making money hand over fist right now, and talk about how NVIDIA is going to take that same architecture, build ARM into it, and expand its portfolio, making these some of the early precursors to NVIDIA's future. And by the end of this video, there's a good chance you're going to stop developing on Raspberry Pi 5s if you have high-end applications, and you're gonna start looking at NVIDIA's offerings. And I just wanna say thank you real quick to NVIDIA who has let us borrow these for some time. And also all of the STH YouTube members who uh, you know have helped us support us and allow us to buy different things for these. You're gonna see some cool stuff in this video that was made possible by those YouTube members. So I just wanna say thank you again. And also if you do wanna support us, you can go join down below. With that, there's a ton to get into here. So let's get to it. Okay, so first off, I just wanted to kind of go over what we have here, and I'm not gonna go through every single feature on these. You can go look that up online. Uh, just, it's gonna take too long if you do that. However, I just wanna show you first the Jetson Nano Dev Kit. Now, I think this thing is about $500, which is certainly a lot more than a Raspberry Pi, but you also get a lot more. Now, at this point, you might be looking and saying, hey, Patrick, the Jetson Orin Nano, that is definitely a lot bigger than a Raspberry Pi 5, but hold on one second here, because it's actually sitting on a carrier board, and so the actual module is much smaller than this development board. It's this little module right here, which has our CPU. It has the integrated Ampere generation GPU, as well as all of the memory that we need. And so for the development kit, that module gets this little heatsink. Plus it also gets a carrier board. And just kind of looking at what we have, we have like our power input display outputs. We have USB, we have a network connectivity. And, uh, you know, we also have GPIO. But if we turn to the back, you'll see that we also have things like our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and all that kind of stuff. But then we also have additional M.2 slots where we can do things like put SSDs. If you have something like a Raspberry Pi and you want to go put in, for example, an M.2 SSD, you have to get a Pi hat anyway, and then go install that. On this board, not only do you not have to use GPIO pins or anything like that, but it just has a slot. It's super easy to go plug in. On this little processor, we get six ARM V8 dot two actually, uh, processor cores. And then we get an integrated GPU, which has 1024 CUDA cores. Now these CUDA cores are the Ampere generation cores. And so we also get 32 tensor cores in this little platform. And if you're thinking like, hey, what the heck is, what am I talking about Ampere? Well, if you remember like the NVIDIA RTX 3090 generation or like 3000 generation, uh, that's an Ampere. This is also, uh, you know, one of their data center GPUs. This is an Ampere, uh, so an A40 generation GPU for the data center. And I know that a lot of people get Raspberry Pis and they'll put like a Coral TPU or like, you know, whatever kind of AI accelerator on there. But the significance of the Jetson platform is the fact that you are getting the same things like this would be like the nvidia a100 like gpu right the cores that are in that and you're scaling it down to something that's only using a couple watts 
Now, NVIDIA also has something that's a little bit higher end or maybe even much higher end, which is the AGX Orin developer kit. Now, this thing was the one that came out first and it costs like $2,000. It is super expensive, frankly, but it's also a developer kit. And the idea is that if you're doing something like making industrial robotics or something like that, you would buy this first and then you'd use that to go and develop on. Inside here, we get another module-based solution, but the overall platform is really nice, frankly, because we get, you know, some GPIO, we still get our USB and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and we also get networking, although one little fun thing, I think that the Jetson actually has 10 gig networking, but we only get like one gig on this. So it's just kind of a little bummer. Hopefully they expose that in the future generations. Um, but you also get things like, you know, your display output and power inputs, cool. But on the bottom of this, you see that we have an M.2 slot and you can literally take something like an eight terabyte NVMe SSD and just go plug it in here. And then you're ready to go, super easy. And before we get to all these CPU, GPU specs, all that kind of stuff, let me just kind of show you uh, what we have over here, which I think is super awesome. And that is you get a PCIe slot built into this platform. Now it's a by 16 slot, but you get PCIe Gen 4 by eight, I think bandwidth out of it. So you can actually put something that's pretty darn fast into this slot. And by the way, the M.2 slot was also PCIe Gen 4, but the differences between the Nano and the big Jetson Orin uh, AGX, they're, they're a lot more than that, right? So the big Jetson, you get 12 cores, which is of course twice as much as we got with the Nano. You also get 2048 CUDA cores. And that of course is like 2X what you got in the Nano, right? So if you were to look at this, you would say, okay, Patrick, I get it. You get like twice as many cores on both the CPU and GPU side, but there's a lot more going on here. And you also get more uh, power consumption or more thermal headroom in this, um, but, but there's more than just clock speeds and cores here. Let me give you an example. For most of the deep learning work or most of the AI inferencing work, you're using the GPU only on the Jetson Nano, but when you get up to the AGX, that's one where you're starting to get the NVDLA which is the NVIDIA Deep Learning Accelerator, I think V2, and you get two of those on this one. NVIDIA also has another board that has only one of them, but this has two, this has zero. This platform also has a number of things related to video. So if you are doing things like you wanna have a bunch of cameras and you wanna do encode, decode, and all that kind of stuff, um, this is a much better platform. This has a vision accelerator also, but it also has things like video encoders. Like for example, I think you can do two 4K 60 H.265 streams encoding on this or up to like 16 1080 30 frames per second uh, encodes on this so like there's a lot more video encoding performance and the same thing is true for the video decode side like for example this can actually decode an 8k 30 stream whereas this can't this also has more camera inputs for things like MIPI CS2 cameras. So like you can go and uh, install more cameras on this and do bunches of cameras, install this. So if you're doing something like you have a security, for example, or a robot where you have a whole bunch of vision cameras and you need to do AI inference based on those vision cameras, that's really what this platform is for. Now, of course, power budget wise, these are very different. The Nano is like seven to 15 watts, whereas this thing I think can go from like maybe 15 up to like 60 watts. And the performance, by the way, scales like crazy on this sucker too. This also has 64 gigs of LPDDR5 memory. So you just have a bigger memory footprint in this versus the Nano. And of course, like the idea, this is more expensive. So it has way more features and not just a straight CPU, but it's also the number of features and like, you know, accelerators and stuff that are around that CPU. So more IO, more features, and it's just a more expensive part. Now I know what you're thinking. This is a far cry from a Raspberry Pi 5, but let's talk a little bit about the ecosystem and where Nvidia is going with this. So NVIDIA, of course, famously tried to buy ARM, but regulators said, no, we're not gonna allow that. At the same time, NVIDIA knows that it needs a CPU solution that's not an x86 CPU. Now, there are a ton of people online who will just say, oh, you know, ARM CPUs are like 15% more efficient than a x86 CPU. And I just wanna point out there that that is not the primary driver of NVIDIA going and switching to ARM versus x86. Now, one of the reasons I wanna be pretty early in showing the Ampere Ultra Max with the NVIDIA A100 GPU piece for a, you know, GTC fall like two, three years ago was really because I think that these things are gonna be hugely important to NVIDIA's future. And the reason for that is really simple. If you were to look at the hopper generation where NVIDIA is making so much money right now, 
That generation was delayed because Sapphire Rapids was delayed. Nvidia could not put out its DGX H100 because it was waiting for a respin of Intel Sapphire Rapids chips. And a couple years ago, I was at the Nvidia headquarters when there was absolutely nobody there. And I asked Ian Buck, I was like, hey, uh, you know, are you doing this just because of the Sapphire Rapids like delay and not having a PCIe Gen 5 CPU that you can, you know, go and, and use for this? Like, is that the reason that that you're doing Grace or Grace Hopper? And uh, he didn't say yes, but I kind of felt like the answer was really yes on that. And so the nice thing about using an ARM CPU with NVIDIA's GPUs is the fact that they can get that higher speed IO. They can have PCIe Gen 6 before Intel and AMD. They can also have PCIe Gen 7 before Intel and AMD. They can customize for things like optical IO in the future to have faster interconnects between these CPUs and GPUs, direct connections, get rid of those PCIe switches, all kinds of different things are opened up when you're not stuck having the same data center processor that Intel or AMD have. So the reason, at least to me, that NVIDIA is going to ARM is not because it's more efficient, but because they can customize the type of CPU they want, exactly tailoring it for AI server needs, but also bringing it all the way down the stack to something that is like a high-end Raspberry Pi competitor. Now on the STH main site, we've looked at the NVIDIA Grace Super Chip and I've showed you a couple of those. You know, you have a package, that package can have two 72 core ARM CPUs. And on the package, you can also have LPDDR memory. And so you can have almost a terabyte of memory plus 144 ARM cores. And that's a, that's kind of a cool thing. And that's something that NVIDIA is showing off. Now, while those are like 500 watt CPUs, the other thing to keep in mind is that you do have the memory built in there. But the other NVIDIA GPU and ARM core thing might be actually a lot more similar to these. The NVIDIA GH200 or Grace Hopper 200, there was a 100 that I don't know if it ever got released. Um, that is a absolutely massive GPU. It actually uses a, uh, a ton of power. I don't know if I'm supposed to say how much it, uh, it uses, but it's a lot more than I think a lot of folks think it uses. We'll just say that. So that has half the module, which is your 72 core ARM, right? Because it's half, and you also get memory. It's about half the memory capacity there. And on the other side, you get the Hopper GPU, which is the H200, which means that you have all six HBM packages that are active. You have faster HBM memory and you have higher capacity. So you get more memory capacity there and, uh, and you also get the ARM CPU. Now that ARM CPU and, and GPU combo, that's actually on a module. Now we've looked at a number of the systems that those go into on the STH main site. We're gonna start doing our review series pretty soon, but those have a module, which is either your Grace Grace or Grace Hopper, and it plugs into a baseboard that has all of the IO that goes to like PCIe IO and all that kind of stuff. That is uh, very similar to a board like this, where you have you know your memory, you have your ARM CPU, you have your GPU IP, and then it goes into a carrier board, right? Of course, since this is STH, I always like to show you the hardware. So let's get over to the other set and let's go take a look at, you know, how these things work and show you jetpack, turn them on, all that kind of stuff. Let's get to that now. Something I just wanna show you really quickly is, you know, what is this thing like to use? So when you have the big Jetson, uh, something that you're gonna see is that you get a system that has EMMC storage. And so you do get a Ubuntu desktop and it's usually pre-configured with like Jetpack and a lot of the NVIDIA tools. You can do things like run Docker containers and uh, all kinds of different software on it. It's essentially just a Ubuntu desktop. And if you wanna go see the AI performance of this, I would say go look at the ML Perf results. There are organizations that have submitted, uh, you know, just an absolute ton of the ML Perf inference results on these Jetson platforms. This is a very, very popular platform. So that's probably the best one just to kind of gauge the level of performance you get with this. At the same time, uh, something that nobody talks about is really the CPU performance. Now there are a number of different ways that you can run this. You can run it at a 15 watt, 30 watt, 50 watt, and then what we have it right now set up as a max end mode, which means the maximum power consumption this will pull. And this thing will easily go and pull over 60 watts. But on the other hand, if you dial it back down to maybe 15 watts, you get something that overall as a system is using maybe a little over 20 watts. Now you might say like, you know, who cares about that? But you have to remember that this is a really, a, or started out as a robotics development platform. So you need to go run things on batteries. And I've definitely run it off of portable batteries before. It's actually super easy and you get a decent amount of runtime, you know, depending of course on the size of battery you're using. 
And for me, having that low power mode has been super awesome because I've been able to use this thing all over the world. I've brought it to places like Switzerland. I've brought it to places like Puerto Rico. I've traveled all over with this in the bag. And something if you just need a camera, well, I usually travel either with a Canon or a Sony camera. And you can take your Sony camera that we have set up here, for example, put it in OTG mode, and that gives you a camera that you can use for video input and get a high quality camera to go do AI inference on. That's really what I've been using this most for, just learning and just playing around with things like you know an nvidia runtime with docker now the flip side is that if you do crank that power you can get a lot more performance like for example you see that off on the set over here we have a mac or an m1 mac mini uh, and this thing is actually pretty comparable to an m1 mac mini in terms of cpu performance on the multi-core side when we look at something like geekbench you could say it's a little slower fine but in the same ballpark or so now, of course, the Mac Mini has performance cores that make the single thread performance a lot better than what you'd see in this Jetson. But on the other hand, this thing also has a pretty honking GPU and you get 64 gigabytes of unified memory. Now, while this had been the workhorse for some time, what happens is usually NVIDIA launches their kind of like higher end developer platform, which is what this is. And then they come up with lower end versions, which is really kind of like, you know, this little Nano. This Nano is more like a really fast version of a Raspberry Pi. And in some ways, this thing kind of feels a lot more like that. Like for example, use SD card storage instead of having onboard EMMC. Now, of course you can have an M.2 SSD and have tons of storage and all that kind of stuff easily with this. But on the other hand, just the model of like, you know, how you use an embedded OS and stuff just kind of feels a little bit more similar when you talk about those two. Still, the other way to look at it is the Raspberry Pi is less expensive, but then what do you scale to beyond that? Now, on the other hand, you can go and get something that's a little bit more expensive, of course, with way more features, which is this Aura Nano over here. And uh, you can scale into something this big. You can scale into a server with GPUs. You can have a Grace Hopper. You could do the platforms for healthcare. And I guess the bigger point is if you wanna be doing AI, well, um, this has a much more scalable platform and an easy path to get into higher end AI, which makes this kind of like a better, just kind of develop platform. Now, of course, there's a giant community behind Jetson. So if you want to learn more, that's probably a good place to start. There definitely are some differences with like using this versus using a like PC with a GPU. Like for example, because this doesn't have PCIe, you can't use things like NVIDIA SMI is a good example of what you can't do in this, but it does have a lot of features and the programming model is similar because you have those Ampere generation CUDA cores. With that, I think it's time to get to our key lessons learned. Okay guys, so what do we learn? So first off, uh, these platforms have been in the wild for some time, and I don't necessarily know the next generation of the Jetson Orin products. You know, NVIDIA has had Jetson Xavier, we, you know, we've looked at a number of different platforms, but at some point, I do think that NVIDIA is gonna come out with a new generation. And before NVIDIA was like the data center darling, these things used to sell out super fast. They're super hard to get. They actually kind of looked like how old Raspberry Pi availability used to be. Now, at some point, there are gonna be a ton of devices at the edge doing AI inference. And that is definitely a battleground. And you know, I don't know if anybody has a good idea of what architecture is gonna win, or realistically, like what architectures in like what power our envelopes and domains are going to win. But, uh, you know, NVIDIA has been at this market for some time, and a lot of their robotics demos are really working on these types of products. And NVIDIA is making so much money on its data center business right now, and I think a lot of people are sleeping on the fact that NVIDIA has a entire robotics platform that's many generations old, that has all kinds of support for inference, cameras, sensors, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but they also have a platform that it doesn't take a huge leap to see how this becomes like a PC platform or something like that in the future. Now, of course, we're going to be at NVIDIA GTC 2024 next week. So definitely go check out the STH main site. We're gonna be live blogging and all kinds of stuff. And of course, if you like this video, why don't you share it with your friends and colleagues, but also give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.